Today we've got some special visitors at the farm. Hello, I'm Griff from Stockton and Winnie Griffith here with Dog Everything, beekeeping farming, countryside living and we do reviews as well. Now I've got a special guest, you'll re recognise these guys. Richard Noel from France and Ollie's farm from Ireland. They are down for two days. They've been eating all my food. They've stripped all everything in the house. I got, I got nothing left. They've eaten all of it. But uh, no, all jokes aside, great to have these top guys down with me. Um, we've had the tour of the farm yesterday. We've had supper last night, and they've helped me a little bit in the office, move some tables, and set up the the new wax pouring area. And uh, thank you very much for that, boys. You're welcome. It's and, a pleasure uh, to be here. We, we, we're just doing a, a bit of a Gwyn and Griff tour, showing them some of my sites, the kind of locations I keep bees in and uh, just compare notes basically. Uh, really good to do this with guys in the industry, especially guys like, like these two professional guys uh, that do really, really well in different parts of the world. It's great to get their knowledge, share what I've got and, and just gain off that. That's a big hack in life. Spend time with people who are further on the line than you because you will learn so much more. And you can see these guys are much, much older than me. <laughs> oh, he's joking. He's so kind, isn't he? He's yeah. so gracious. The, the, these guys are top guys, and I've learned loads of them already in a short time uh, that they've been here. And uh, I'm going to ask you guys now, what do you think of Wales? What do you think of Wales, Richard? Are you enjoying your stay down it's, here? It's a fantastic country. I do have a bit of history myself from my uh, part of my family who is in Shrewsbury, so I kind of know the area pretty well. But it's not until you get into the depths of mid Wales, it's actually slightly different. But it's beautiful countryside, uh, amazing, amazing sites to have bees, and uh, really, really cool to be here just to experience it all. But it does rain quite a bit. <laughs> I have to say. That. How do you think, Ollie? Is, is it like a, is it like the green green grass grass of home? It is actually, yeah. Like I said that to it yesterday, similar, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's very, very similar to Ireland. Beautiful spot, beautiful place. Looking forward to seeing all your bees and your sites. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for showing us around. Let's go oh, into the deep dark site. Well, wow. They're flying long. Got a tree down. Look at the bees flying. Oh wow. Good size, isn't it? Yeah, nice. So if you recognise this site from the video, this is the site we pulled almost a ton of honey from and uh, one of our best producing sites this year. Well I can't believe the bees are flying as much as they are now because it's not the warmest of days today. It's no, uh, busy, aren't they? only 12, 13, they're out doing their bit and there's obviously some late pollen coming in because they're doing well there. Everywhere they're flying. Nice. Right. A bit wet underground it's that time of year but with with this site the whole thing was this site was this farm they'd fence this corner of the field off because it was too wet to farm yeah. and uh, what I did then put a gate in at the end and put bees and that's what beekeeping is all about really bees going on the farms and utilizing land which the farmer is not using but that land which is not productive is being put to use through bees. It's, it's incredible because very often when I'm looking for apiaries, I'm only asking the farmer for a tiny area that is not being used. That otherwise can't be, it's, like, it's almost like a dog end and it's actually perfect for me, perfect for the farmer. And like you say, it, fits, it suits everybody because it's usually out of sight, out of mind. But it's just finding those places, that's the problem. So with, with this site, Rich, if, if someone offered you this site, the, the, the Oh, we got we got right the, in the, the, ear. the West Black Bees out. Right hood, in the ear. Hoods on. Time to put the hoods on. I don't think it got me actually. A little bit. You you put in the hood on, Holly, just in case. Might as well, just My in case. in a slight path. You right, Rich? Yeah. So I say this was in France now when you got off of this site. Uh, be honest now, there's, there's lots of bad points about this site. Lots of good things, but. A, a big bad point is what what, what would you say uh, which, which brings this site down um nothing in general because i always say a site is only you can only value it on on the honey production and what you get out of it once you use it but you can always uh, obviously we, i think we've discussed this before with the site is the fact that the access with your truck is difficult so you've got to bring your powered barrow but you use your powered barrow to get around that issue so it's not a problem for you. 
but that's something that if I was buying this I'd consider you know if I if I didn't have the barrel I don't know whether I'd come here that's the problem um, if you were looking at using an easy loader or something like that you there's no way you could use it you might be able to just get so the thing is the site is so good it's worth scouring it to find some slightly alternative if you were using a different machine or a different vehicle but if, if it works for you and you get that honey out at the end of the day to me it's still worth it I would say so what do you think I'll leave reckon the uni mark will get down here Probably not, no. <laughs> I'll be back there in the wheelbarrow. But no, lovely site. Nice and sheltered. It's away from everybody. It's secure, it's safe. You know, what more could you ask for? Nice lot of bees there. Taking that feed down. You can see this is a solid block of bees and honey. Nice. Are we smelling that banana smell? You know, they're a little bit agitated, they don't like me here. You see these, are the colour of these, these are what I call the Welsh black bees. They're tolerant, they're not too bad. It's no, not, they're it's right. not, it's not the warm, it's not the warmest, Let's Dave. leave them alone. Let's visit another site. We're just here on the secret site. These guys know where it is, but it's not so secret to people in Kamar. Then they know where this site is, but we are gonna do a reveal video one day very, very soon. And did you guys have a shock to see the pond down here after driving through where we just driven? Yeah, that's pretty cool. Unbelievable. Couldn't believe that. it. Such an amazing site. Loads of moisture for the bees, for everything. Totally sheltered, secluded, private. No hassle at all. They have everything they need here. Let's go see some bees. So down here, I think I've got 12. I've just put uh, two stands down on this side. Let's get another four or six to bring the number up to a, a decent commercial level, I find. What do you guys think? What, what kind of numbers do you have per site? Around the 16. Around the 16. I try and get up to around 16 if I can take it. I think maybe over 16 might be a little bit too much. But I do have some sites with only maybe 10, 8 or 10, especially on the roofs. It's too many up there. On the roofs, like rooftop beekeeping? Rooftop, yeah. Oof. On the top of a whiskey distillery in the site, right in the centre of um, what you, what you, Dublin. Wow. Whiskey distillery, Teeling's whiskey distillery, yeah. It's hard work getting the honey up and down. <laughs> I bet. <laughs> but it's a deadly sight. Pretty cool. I, I would say oh, exactly I would say exactly the same about between 16 and 18. But for me though where I am, I, I know my flow, so I know that in certain areas during the chestnut flow you could have a hundred hives in one area and you wouldn't dent the forage. But as an average you've got to work out what can sustain your hives well. If you have too many in one area, you're gonna feed more and they're gonna be less um well less less developed all year round and that's why i find so you've got to be really a lot of people don't understand this but they they think they end up feeding more but it's the overall colony size and sometimes you can only have 12 in one area but it's better to have 12 really good colonies that give really good honey or move those away when you need to when the flow is really strong in the other areas and you put them in and they do really well because they've been well maintained in that previous area that's the key to it, but you, you know, you get to know your areas and this is, this is really good. You can see there's so much forage over for them here. It's a perfect place. You, I reckon you could probably have 20 here and be all right. Yeah. But um, it's always, I reckon 16 to 18 is about an average. It's good. Yeah, so basically we're saying the same. 16 to 20, that's, that's yeah. kind of yeah. a good commercial yeah. number per site. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, you, you get the, uh, the ability where you, you, you're not relying on nature you know um to, to give them everything so you can keep an eye on but at the same time if you need to step in you can but most of the time everything's catered for with that number you know and and they do pretty well on that there's nothing worse than small colonies where they never do well because there's t too many bees in one area and uh you, you're just pushing them too hard you know you, you just got to give them space that's why it is difficult as well to say if you've got other beekeepers nearby there's no point in moving into an area where there's loads of beekeepers already. It's the worst thing you can do. You just define your own apiaries and you'll do much better for it. Just spending a bit of time checking out who's in the area. And it's polite as well. And it helps with your disease control, I reckon. Much less cases of stuff like EFB. Uh, you know, you're just giving the bees that space they need. And they're not bumping into other colonies all the time. Because they will rob them out. You know, and then there's the disease spread. So, uh, what, a, what a spot though. Here, these are flying well. And what, 14 yeah. degrees today? Really well. Yeah, they're off, yeah. 
Shoot the same out of that. Oh, look at this. Oh, wow, that's so cool. Wow, look at that plane. So what's the consensus on that site, Rich? Pretty good, pretty good. You're getting the sun come in most of the day. Okay, you're slightly under the trees, like you said, but you're not getting the, the full dampness of the forest. You get the light coming in and they've got the protection from the wind, if there is any, and I think it's a really good site. Plus the fact it's in an area that's just huge, you know, massive. So uh, yeah, I think, um, I think a really nice site. All the bees I have, wherever they're near water, they do really well. They've just got that stop gap. And because it's so low lying this area, you're going to get loads of different types of forage, you know, grasses and flowers. What Good stuff. What Good do you stuff. think, Ali? Lovely site. Jealous. Cracking site. <laughs> Loads of space. Like, it's perfect. You, you're almost like in there, but you could be there, you could be there. It's, to me, it's like you, you can do whatever you want here, you know, it's amazing. But it's good to keep them all together in that respect. We'll wait for the big reveal. Yeah. You guys know where it is now. <laughs> <laughs> no, fair play. Yeah, nice. Great Very site. nice. All right, one more site, and that's the tour done. Here we are on the last and final visit of the day before we head out for some food. And Richard is seeing Himalayan balsam for the first time. Have you seen it before? Never seen this before. We have a similar page in patience at home, but we get the bees getting two dots on the head. But I know it's nothing like this. This is a completely different one. And a lot of people in the UK go on about, oh, you haven't got it. I can't believe you haven't got it because everywhere you go over here, it's endemic everywhere, isn't it? And people try and clear loads and loads of it. But if you're a beekeeper, everyone absolutely loves it. This is why we have such a big dearth in Britain because we don't have any of this. But it's it's an amazing plant. It grows really tall. That's the seeds for next year, isn't it? Give it, give it, a, give it a tickle. Will they all burst? Maybe it's a bit wet. Oh, there we go, yeah. <laughs> Maybe jump. Sometimes they all go, so, here you go, look, there. I should be gathering these and taking them back to Brittany to infect you everywhere. I'll probably be in trouble now. <laughs> don't do that, you'd be in trouble. I'd be in right. trouble, all right, but we'd have some good honey crops. <laughs> yeah, nice yeah to see. so there we have it. That's what we've got in here. Is all that over there, was it the same? All that's lying yeah. down there, it was all Himalayan. Yeah, because yeah. we've, we've got the, the river just down there. Yeah. Himalayan balsam just, just follows it. Birds eat it, they, they poop, they spread the seeds. Yeah. And I think like this, this seed, it can produce up to 9,000 seeds per plant. Yeah. And this can actually explode and then take it almost nine meters away. In time, yeah. As Look well. At Look at that go. Woo! You know, super, super, super effective plant at spreading and, mu and multiplying. It's, it's a powerful, powerful weed. And uh, yeah, very much invasive. Lord, there's a lot of bad. But the class 22 is bees absolutely love it. And, and it's not just bees that benefit from it, it's all the other insects in the system, isn't it? It's yeah, everyone does. 100%. Well. But at, 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 in a time a when there wouldn't be much erosion, around. Doesn't it? Yeah, r r of, r not, river sorry, erosion. River erosion. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's a cause of it. Yeah, it's yeah. a cause. Because what, what happens is it's so strong, it take over an area, then this just dies off in the winter. There's just bare earth left. Right, so, right. Right. so then water and river erosion just decimates the ground. Yeah, so there's it, nothing it, growing in it else no, that, that secures the soil to the yeah, ground. Yeah, this will outcompete pretty much anything yeah. else, yeah. Interesting though, nice to actually finally see it. Oh, there's plenty it's, of it. It's, it's plenty surprising of it how, how sturdy it is, though, isn't it, and how tall oh, it grows. Yeah. But, I can see those roots there, how, how tall it was. You know? Yeah, but it's, it's like a super weak plant as well. So if you, if you give it a pull, it should, whoop, not that one. But normally, the, the roots are very, oh, so are are very, very shallow. shallow yeah. yeah. But maybe because, maybe because you've got a lot of moisture in the soil. I mean, we're in Wales, aren't we? Everywhere yeah, is wet. Yeah, and that's why yeah. this thrives in Wales, basically. It doesn't like any kind of drought. It likes no. being wet. And uh, yeah. Maybe it's just too, 
it isn't suited at all for where we are home. Mm, maybe. Maybe, maybe it's all dry. Honey bee. And look at that. With the, pollen on it. The October, the honeybee with pollen still working it. Amazing. Incredible. There she goes again. Which I'd notice in the Japanese not breed, unfortunately. This Everywhere site does suffer from that. It's a beautiful plant and it does produce, we have a lot of this in Britain, it does produce a lot of flowers just at a good time when there's nothing else around. But it's a terrible plant as well because it's so, uh, roots penetrate through concrete and tarmac and it's the same same problem we have with it in. Uh, yeah, and that, that's a lot worse than him laying balsam because if you've got this outside your house or in your garden and then you can't get a mortgage on it because yeah. this can make your house unstable, that's how yeah. bad that is. Where yeah. Himlin balsam, that's not a problem for that at all. You got the Himlin in uh, Japanese not breed in Ireland, Ollie? Very little patches of it. Oh, that's, you're that's not good. allowed to go near it. You're not allowed to touch it. And it's usually basically poisoned off by the county council. You know, and they just put up a big sign saying, please do not propagate or you know, like or go near it. Because it, like, as you say, it is very invasive. Yeah. Yeah. I think you've a lot of it here, don't you? Yeah, unfortunately, a lot, 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 lots of parts of South Wales uh, very much suffer badly with it. Bees are very, very active today on this side. Very much. Look at this box. All gone empty. Which one is that? That's good. Is that, up, is that up to eight or does it need a bit more? I'd say that's well up to it. Well up to it. Plenty in there. That's it, we've just been round a few sites. Have you boys enjoyed the Gwynny Cliff? Terrible experience. Ter terrible visit, never coming back. <laughs> Worst well, bees in the world ever. <laughs> well, yeah. no, it, was, it was really good, really good to see. That oh, was fantastic, Ruff. Cheers for having us here. Brilliant, brilliant. So we're just gonna have a little bit of food now, a cup of tea, talk in the house, and then we're going to Aberdeen on for food. Whether I put some of that in the video, I don't know. But anyway, if this is the end of the video, thanks for watching, and make sure you follow Rich on YouTube, Instagram, YouTube, Twitter, everywhere, same as Ollie. Ollie's not really active on YouTube yet, but give him a follow. Uh, but he's very active on Instagram, Instagram Facebook, TikTok. and TikTok, TikTok and yeah. Twitter. See you all there. Thanks for Thanks watching. Thanks everybody. See you again guys. soon. Take care. Bye for now. Uh, that's it. We're saying goodbye to Rich and Ollie. You guys enjoyed Wales? Brilliant. Right Great up time. to this moment till we had to wear these hats. <laughs> <laughs> but they're beautiful hats. That's, yes. the that's the rule. You come here, you, you got to leave with a hat. That's, that's the rule. Especially. Uh, yeah, it's been a really, really good trip. It's just amazing to see how you brought everything together. Wonderful bee products, candles, honey, Products from the hive, just wonderful to, to see it all brought together. Fair play to you, mate, really good. Thank you work much. hard, you've got a lovely family. Thank it's you. Great to Thank you. I second that. And, Fantastic uh, setup. I've learned so much of you guys because the, these guys are much more advanced than me on bee farming and uh, picking these guys' brains flat out and uh, I've learned loads myself. But you guys, now this ain't over. You're going on the, more of a beekeeping tour trip. Yeah, we're, going to we're, we're, the got, we're visiting a, a commercial beekeeper this uh, afternoon this evening. Then tomorrow Ollie goes to Birmingham, we're dropping him off to the airport, and then I'm going off to see my in-laws, and then I go back to, to France to face all my stuff uh, on the Saturday, <laughs> and it's all there waiting for me, just like Ollie's is waiting for me. <laughs> we had a fantastic break, just, to, just, to, just what we needed, a bit of a recharge, have a few beers, meet everybody, and it's been spot on. Thanks very much. No Thanks very much. Well, really glad these guys came to visit me, and if you don't follow, make sure you click the links on the post we've been putting up, and make sure you follow Rich and Ollie on social media. Cheers, Grof. Take care, everybody. Good, good to see you. Thanks so much. Cheers. Goodbye. See you, Grof. Have they gone? Yeah, they're gone. Thanks for the car.